Welcome back, my friends, to another episode of TFT Hyperroll with Artark, where we do Hyperroll builds. And in this early part of the video, I ask you to please like, comment, subscribe, do things that helps the YouTube algorithm so people can find the channel and I can keep doing videos like this for as long as Riot allows us to continue on this Hyperroll journey. Today's video focuses on a build that is actually a lot of fun to do, but is not always easy to get through. This was done on the PBE and they have adjusted it a few times, although I think this was done during the final adjustment. But I suspect given how out of hand this particular build can get, it may be adjusted more in the future. Now, when I see an early blue buff like that, I'm already thinking I want to do something spell slingery ish or something with spell casting. Although, whenever I get a threat early, I'm thinking I should do threats. The augments kind of made my decision here because I was looking at Jeweled Lotus and Gadgetine Heart. Jeweled Lotus would give me critical strike chance on abilities, but Gadgetine Heart gives me an Annie, which I can put out and then immediately have Gadgetine without having to start with Poppy. So I can bring LeBlanc straight into this match. And while I'm not giving up Vel yet, it's not likely he's making it in. And LeBlanc is immediately powerful with a blue buff on her. And as we mentioned before, the blue buff has changed. So it's giving you additional AP and then you get bonus mana when you get a kill within three seconds of casting. Now with a start like this, there are two directions I can really go. I can head into a Spell Slinger build because both LeBlanc and Annie are Spell Slingers and she'll be the tank for that. Or I can head into a Heart build that also has Spell Slingers in it. Again, Annie will be the tank in that. She's really the keystone to both of those builds. Now at this point, the game is kind of tempting me a little because if you ever want to go threats, loaded dice are key because they will only give you threat champions so if i consider going that way i can but i go ahead and take the giant's belt as a way to tank up annie more the key here annie is going to be the tank now while annie is going to become quite annoying as the game goes on when it starts she's just not that strong as a little one star bronzy so once they can get through they can take out your team pretty quickly don't be discouraged by early game losses if you're going this direction. Finding an early Sona pretty much cemented that I want to go Heart. Problem with Heart is it's a slow start. You're not likely to win early because its key is when the matches are lasting longer and longer and you can get more powerful. Now there are two things you want to be thinking about. You want to be thinking about your Annie tank items, but you don't want to forget about your Soraka items as well. And one of the keys is the Hextech Gunblade. So right now I'm thinking pick up the sword so that I can transfer that blue buff over from LeBlanc onto Soraka when I get a chance. And by transfer, I don't mean with a magnetic remover. I'm going to try to pick up additional LeBlanc so that I can sell LeBlanc and then take the items and put them onto Soraka. And I know these games look pretty bleak early. And that's simply because at the two heart level, you're just not gaining enough AP to make a real difference. A lot of your champions are higher cost. It's much like Sure Shot where you're off and off to a slow start and then it comes on later. So this is a tough augment to decide between because a key element of a heart is going to be healing. So first aid kit is fantastic, but you gain more ability power each time your champions cast. So blue battery is likely going to give you more power. And if you can get Sona and Soraka, you're going to have plenty of healing. My goal again, tank items for Annie and then very specific items for LeBlanc, which will be blue buff, Hextech Gunblade, and then either a damage amplifier or just a second Hextech Gunblade. Two items I find key for Annie are the War Mogs and the Dragon's Claw, and that's because she will be gaining health back as a percentage of her overall health, which will be increased with the War Mogs, but it's when she gets her shield, she'll be gaining some health back, so it'll keep her up longer. The NPC round gave us some neat toys, and then our item selection gave me the chance to create my essential 
any dream items because I'm going to be able to create a Warmogs, a Sunfire Cape, and the Dragon's Claw. That for me is the perfect combination. You can substitute the Sunfire Cape with a Titan's Resolve so that she just gets more powerful as she goes. But this way she's setting fire to people in lots of different ways and it really allows her to tank effectively. And you'll get an idea of just how nonsensical an Annie can be. One of the things and the reason I like Dragon's Claw is there's a lot of spell casting champs in this set. Even champs that you otherwise would think are doing AD damage like Yasuo are actually doing spell damage with their ults. So the Dragon's Claw works and with the heart trait you can see just how insane it can grow the ability power. Now when going hard, I look at LeBlanc as just really an item holder for Soraka, so I am willing to dump her for Soraka as soon as I get the chance. As a heart champion, blue buff is absolutely key, and then we're going to want to try to get Hextech Gunblades on her, one or two, or just a damage amplifier along with the Hextech Gunblade. And again, I just want to stress how important the Dragon's Claw is. There's so much AP in this set. Even in your recons, two of them are really functioning high off of AP. That's Kaisa and Ezreal. Your threats, with the exception of Belvath, are mostly AP. Cho is AP. Velkaz is AP. So if you can get a Dragon's Claw on Annie, she's going to stay in a long time. Now, even though I use LeBlanc for items, I like to bring her back into the mix, and that is for the admin trait, which can be very useful. In this case, we get combat start, your team gains a 20% health shield. Well, when we're relying on Annie as a tank, that's going to be very good because she's going to get a shield on top of her shield. And what you are really, really hoping for in this build is that hero augment. Infuse with Soraka is going to make her nearly unstoppable. The team is going to be getting mana every five seconds, which is going to keep them casting, which is going to keep them more powerful. In this case, I decide to go with the blue buff, Hextech Gunblade, and then the Enhancer, which will be the Jeweled Gauntlet in this case. And remember, I'm still getting Gadgetine items because I took that Gadgetine heart in the beginning. One of the things that scares me with heart is even though you're going to be strong mid game when you have four, you need six to win, which requires Syndra. Luckily, we just found her. But while that supporting cast is important, it really all will not work without Annie. Just check her out. You take her and Lee Sin, put them together. He will keep her shielded. She will shield herself. And she is going to be very, very hard to take down as it gets later into the fight. Now the other general warning with this is there's a lot of competition for Annie because she fits into a lot of builds. So you don't sometimes get her up to two stars and at one star she falls apart. It's time for our next two item choices. First I'm going to grab the Hextech Gunblade because why not add some more healing onto this team. Then we have to sell someone in order to get the Anvil. That still bothers me but Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and grab the Warmogs to put onto Lee Sin so I just have more staying power up front. Again, the heart build really relies upon the game lasting a long time, and so I'm using the items I can to make the game last longer and thereby getting more power. This match will give you an idea of the sheer power. Now remember, we have blue buff and inspire, so we are casting a lot, but at 9 additional AP per cast, they just become unreasonably strong. Getting up to 6 heart this early is not typical, so do not count on it. Often you spend a lot longer waiting to get to it, and it's the thing that saves you at the end, but you'll see when you get to 6 heart, you can just wipe teams without even thinking about it. And with that victory, we are quite aggressively again into the top four. I decide to bring in Alistair just to give us a little bit of extra healing with Mascot because, uh, yeah, this team needs more healing. It is time for our final two items of the match. And for the first one, we can go ahead and grab Thieves Gloves because that's something good that we can put on Alistair just to give him more power. And then we can take the Gadgetine item. If it's tanky, put it on Lee Sin. If it's more attackable item we can put it onto our back line with soraka itemized i'm just looking at the front line for real power 
and getting a three-star gold Annie is going to ensure that. There are a few builds in this game that once they are completed, they are almost impossible to beat, and Heart is one of them, but it is difficult to get to that point. Threats also kind of one of them, except that their Belveth was not perfectly itemized. In our case, our Soraka and Annie are perfectly itemized. So here's the real thing. Heart is a very, very viable build, but it requires a lot of things to come together. It doesn't necessarily always work, and you will find yourself going out eighth if you try to force it. But when all the pieces come together, you're pretty much guaranteed a victory, and it's a GG for everyone. As always, hope you enjoyed this video, hope it helps you on your road to hyper, and of course, have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.